coach any changes to Joe's availability? Uh, he is available and he will play. When you look at what Dario's been able to do recently, especially from three-point line, uh, how would you best quantify his value to the team? I think he's responded to the single sort of focus offensively that that we gave him, that I gave him from day one. Like his ability to make threes is going to greatly increase his value and, and, and benefit to the team. Uh, he plays with such a motor. He really plays most possessions. And uh, just watch him attack an offensive rebound. I think that when we all judge you know, different players and we talk about effort, just pure effort, do they care? You know, watch him. Like he's hard to box out. He's he he wants to 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 fulfill his role, and the three point shot offensively has been the thing that we've discussed. And his form, and his footwork, his release point, his his lack of hesitation, just rise up if you're open. He's six foot ten. All those things have equaled an improved shooter. When you look at uh, rotations, trimming things up, what's the level of importance that you put on it now, trying to really tighten things up and figure out who you have going forward? Um, there, there for sure is a level of importance. I, I don't want to over-dramatize it. What we've been doing has has been working. 13 out of our 15 uh, rotation groups have been productive, with our starters being the best in the NBA. They're, they're number one in the NBA. I think keeping guys alive, um, like, you know, Justin Anderson or Rashawn and when Jared Bayless comes back as examples, um, giving my players some rest, uh, Marco and JJ and Joel and Cub and look at Ben's minutes as a rookie interests me and, and winning games. And so when you try to keep people alive, you try to give some of your high minute guys rest and you're trying to move up the food chain and, and move up the Eastern Conference standings to get as high a seat as you can, you know, that equal ecosystem is a little bit fragile. And so determining, like, rotations and perfect uh, pairings is, is, is a part of all that. And, uh, but there are other factors that sort of come into play when you're making those decisions. Brett, um, in regards to Joel, is this just a matter of him being fatigued for playing, you know, more games than he's ever played. I think that that has something to do with it. Um, you know, he could answer that better than 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 I I can. My opinion is 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 for sure that has something to do with it. Um, and you know, we we we're so mindful of Joel Embiid. I think had we all met on whatever is this March the 11th today? If we all knew on March the 11th, we were going to say you know, that he has played this many games and this many minutes, you would have given the medical team a trophy. Uh, they, they are our team's MVP in many ways. And so it's, it does add up. And, and as, I, as I said, we as an organization are very, very mindful of how do we deliver Joel Embiid to April in what we hope to be a playoff situation, just fresh and, and ready to go. Right. Yesterday you were talking about the perimeter defense kind of taking a hit because you may be trying not to foul more than you should have, and it was kind of holding the guys back a little bit. How do you strike that balance between like not closing out too hard but still being there? I mean, it's and, and we're, we're all coaches and we're greedy, and we need to be greedy, and I want it all. And so tonight, like the three-point shot is king with Brooklyn. They're shooting almost 40 a game since I believe it's Christmas. Uh, maybe maybe February the first, but it's a big big number, and so you know like you're closing out to the three point line. They shoot a lot and they make they, they make you know a decent percentage. And how do you guard that? And sometimes with that attention, you know you're going to get blown by. And are they blown? Are we blown by you know on two dribbles or one dribble? Because if you you get beat on that first dribble, it really puts pressure on weak side defense. Sometimes they just can't get there quick enough. A second dribble buys time. And so the containment versus the foul versus tonight's game of the three-point line is king. You know, like that's a game plan thing. And so I hope with this foul thing that you, you've asked to have the ability to close out short, take away airspace, not get lifted, be, be first off the floor. We want to be second off the floor. 
and with an understanding is we could be in rotations in long shot, long rebound stuff. We hope our guards rebound tonight. And uh, that, that thing that we talked about yesterday um, goes into sort of hyper mode today, given our opponent. You and talked about the Nets uh, make a really big drive to the game. Uh, how do you prevent them from initiating their attack, going downhill, and then kicking out to threes? You just have to have that extra F in so many areas. So think about what that stat that, that you, you just said. And so, you know, 43 is a game, and, and plus they lead the NBA in drives. And, you know, you close out hard, they drive it. You don't close out, they shoot it. And that's just, that's our sport. I think that the template of, of their style of play is, is the modern day game. It's Houston amped up with different players. And so, you know, this is, this is uh, when you study their, their style, they are an analytics poster child, you know, with threes or layups, you know, try to get to the line, really, really reduce long twos, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, we get who we're playing tonight. I, I consider this team extremely dangerous because of the style it is. It's hard to guard. And uh, I think that starting five is good. Like, you, you look at their team, they're hard to guard. And, and they... They confirmed that the last time we were here. Right. They do a great job. They always play with a motor. They, they always play with a spirit. You never really see them, you know, sort of roll over. It was the thing I was proud about in Philadelphia. You know, and the city demands that you have to, no matter what goes on, you really better come with a with a hard hat and an edge. And I don't have have any advice. I think like what I see is he's really good at what they're doing. You know, we, we went overboard with, with development, we went overboard with relationships, we try to hold the locker room together, make them feel they had worth, help them. And, uh, you know, you blink and five years later, we're in a pretty good spot. You know, we got a young foundation, we like in the direction we're pointing. But from afar, looking across the fence at this team, and, and Sean Marks is a very close friend of mine, they, they too, you know, I think that they get Jeremy healthy and doing what they're doing in style of play. I, I can see they're heading in the right direction. We right direction. We got respect for them. What's the challenge of facing a hungry team that wants to play the sport? I mean, just the stuff you know. I would say. Uh, I feel the good news is, it's not like we were that good last time we came here. And uh, you know, most of that I give credit to Brooklyn. Some of it I think was self-inflicted, where we poked ourselves in the eye. They really exposed and challenged our ability to guard them one-on-one. -on -one. Can you simply just guard your man? And we, we understand like the gym we're coming into tonight. There's not going to be any surprises about how they play or who they are. We feel a, 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 an appropriate fear. We respect who we're playing. And you know we're not taking anything for granted. We we are coming in here very hungry and very focused. Coach, you guys look at the standings every day. You know you're in a playoff race. How do you uh, make sure the young guys aren't getting too ahead of themselves? Or we we, we remind them every day. You know, like who, who are we? We we haven't achieved anything that that should should you know make us feel like. Here we are. We don't feel, led by me, that we've arrived at all. You know, my goal for this team is to have them play better basketball longer and find ways that, that we can, you know, get better. It's, it's a boring answer, but it is 100% the truth. And my, my mission is I, I completely understand what, come, what goes on in the playoffs. I, I understand what's around the corner. And, and we first want to get there. We, we second want to be equipped once we're there to try to win. And the, the, the next month coming up, you know, there's so much we feel like we can do to shore up, to be better equipped, try different things, either with a lineup or, or a different pick and roll defense to make sure we have stuff in our arsenal. And uh, that, that's my job. That's what I remind them of daily. And uh, I believe they listen. What have been the advantages for you to having two similarly sized guys that, at least offensively, have pretty different skill sets that they contribute on that side? And you talking about with, with now Earson? Yeah, I mean, that too. Well, 
so that's not true what you said at the start. Like, Robbie doesn't play much for at all. No, I just mean playing next to each other. I hear you. I think that, you know, the switchability, the, the, the versatility to where we can have length, you know, throw Ben in that mix. It's been the thing that has let us be, you know, fourth, third, fifth, most of the year defensively. And then you have Joel behind it, like the world changes. And so, you know, I think this too is part of the modern day game. You know, do you have a team that can switch? And uh, the length of those two when you throw in Simmons, like I feel like that has, has helped us. I think that when you go to Dario, when you go back to that sort of defensive thing we're talking about lately, we've been, you know, exploring some hedge opportunities where he doesn't have to sit down and guard him you know, a water bug guy that can dance with the ball type guard. But in general, that length comes to my mind first. We, we got a long team. What about on the other side of the ball? You know, I have two forwards similarly sized, but pretty good shooters. Dorio was a little bit long, lots of dribble passing. What have been the advantages of having similar sized guys that can do different things? Well, I mean, mostly just the respect that the large majority of the league gives them to shoot. And, you know, you go Covington and the way Dario's been shooting it. They end up being very sort of flattering classmates, teammates to Ben and Joel because the, the, the defense doesn't leave them very often. And it's part of Robert's challenge. You know, it's not like Robert's surprising the league anymore. People are making him dribble. They're closing up hard. Like, go ahead, beat me off a dribble. You're not going to, you know, beat me with an open three. And we've seen his world shrink a little bit in relation to, to, to closeouts in the, in the focus. But those two guys, you know, provide that space, especially to Ben and Joel. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, everybody.